I have a grand audio experiment in mind that, to my knowledge, and after scouring the internet, has never been done before, or at the very least, the attempt has never been documented that I can see. I'll let you know what my idea is towards the end of the video, but this video is really about the beating heart of that experiment. The humble, utilitarian, all but forgotten micro cassette recorder. In this video, I want to briefly explore this particular micro cassette recorder I've chosen, as well as go over some brief explanation and details of this understandably outdated technology. If it isn't obvious already, you're listening to the first limitation, frequency response. Generally speaking, the typical microcassette tape is only capable of a frequency response roughly between about 400 hertz all the way up to about 4,000 hertz. Now some could achieve a tad wider range, but not by much. While this is perfectly usable for basic dictation and note taking, it obviously doesn't sound that great. Matter of fact, right about now, you'll notice a super slick crossfade to my main studio microphone I've placed within a few inches of the micro cassette recorder. Ah, uh, the 21st century sounds much better. So the actual audio tape contained in a micro cassette is the same tape stock contained in normal sized compact cassettes. However, while it is the same width and format, Micro cassette tape often isn't as thick as compact cassette tape. For instance, the same tape contained in a 60 minute standard cassette tape would not fit in a micro cassette case. It's too thick. So, to make 60 minutes of tape work in a micro cassette case, it has to be thinner to fit on the spools. So, strike one to the audio fidelity of micro cassette is a less substantial magnetic medium. But the biggest reason for the lackluster frequency response is the tape speed itself. Where standard cassette tape runs at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second and can achieve a frequency response even beyond 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz with type 4 metal high bias tape on a great tape deck, micro cassette is normally bound to type 1 normal bias tape running at a fraction of the speed, 15 sixteenths of an inch per second or even as low as 15 30 seconds of an inch per second. Now these speeds are more commonly noted on micro cassette recorders as 2.4 centimeters per second and 1.2 centimeters per second. To further crystallize the divide in fidelity, recording studio tape machines run at 15 inches per second and even 30 inches per second, while micro cassette, at best, runs at less than one inch per second. Quick clarification for the peanut gallery who may be typing away with veins bursting out of their foreheads. Yes, for a couple of years in the 1980s, manufacturers dabbled with higher fidelity, type 4 high bias metal micro cassettes that achieved much higher fidelity and frequency response. But still couldn't surpass standard cassette quality. And with CDs just a couple years away by the mid to late 1980s, high fidelity micro cassettes were too little too late. You can learn much more about high fidelity micro cassettes by watching Techmoan's awesome video linked up here and in the video description. The micro cassette recorder I've chosen is the Radio Shack Micro 29, partly because growing up Radio Shack product catalogs were my skin mags and the store itself was the friggin Playboy Mansion, but mostly because this particular model has the features I was looking for. Most importantly, an external microphone jack. I'll crossfade again to the micro cassette recording to show you exactly why an external microphone is critical to the experiment I'll mention later. Using the recorder's built-in microphone picks up the ceaseless whine of the tape mechanism and motor. You can easily hear the motor whine in this recording. Extra mechanical noise is insult to injury when the tape hiss is already so high hiss itself already exacerbated by the incredibly low tape speed. Listen to the whine for a brief moment while I crossfade back to my studio mic. Ah, that's better. With an external microphone, I can eliminate the mechanical noise since an external microphone isn't physically bolted to said mechanisms. Okay, so 
here's my great experiment I'm working on for a later video. And by great experiment, I mean it will likely sound just as horrible as it was fascinating to tinker with. I am going to try and mix an entire song where each individual track has been bounced back and forth off of micro cassette. In a nutshell, I'll record the raw, unprocessed kick drum track by itself off of the computer to the micro cassette, then play back the kick drum from the micro cassette back into a new project session on the computer. I will repeat the same process with each track in the song. Unprocessed bass guitar back and forth to and from the micro cassette. Unprocessed guitar tracks back and forth. Unprocessed vocals back and forth, and so on. There will be a click at the exact same microsecond at the beginning and end of each track to help with alignment in the mixing session. Line up the two clicks track by track, and theoretically everything should be in time and in phase. Theoretically. Because wow and flutter and variations in motor speed will likely rear their ugly heads. So once all the tracks are imported from the micro cassette and aligned as best as possible in the computer session, the mixing will begin in earnest. Needless to say, the theoretical 400 hertz to 4000 hertz frequency response will be a limitation. For instance, on the kick drum, the snap of the beater hitting the drum head will work fine. That snap usually occurs around 2 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz range or so. The low end thump, however, at best, is just below 100 hertz. 80 hertz is typical, but I personally like to bring it out even lower at 60 hertz. Some engineers go as low as 40 hertz or even lower, but that's another discussion. If I'm limited to 400 hertz on the low end of the micro cassette, will there be enough low end to salvage and boost? Probably not, but we'll see. That's the fun of it all. Bass guitar will obviously be a challenge as well. I typically bring out the low end of a bass around 100 hertz. That's 300 hertz lower than the theoretical limit of micro cassette. Can I salvage any low end from the bass guitar? Upper mid-range fret noise should still be okay though. While vocals will sound okay even if I can only start them at 400 hertz, a lot of natural air lives above 8, 9, even 12 kilohertz. That may be completely lost if 4 kilohertz is the upper limit of micro cassette before high end is simply replaced by the noise floor of hiss. And hiss. Oh, the hiss. This is going to be about a dozen or more tracks of hiss stacked on top of each other. Even without surgical gating, it will be a struggle. So, at absolute best, we can assume a reasonably recognizable song absolutely smothered in merciless hiss like you've never heard before. But at worst, the wow, flutter, and potential tape motor speed inconsistency will render the entire idea a failed concept, crashing and burning in an out-of-sync dumpster fire of phasing issues. We'll see. At any rate, that mic jack is key. With that external microphone jack, I can theoretically pipe in any audio source directly to tape. In this case, the individual tracks from a recording session on my computer. The actual procedure will more than likely require some experimentation and a bunch of cables, connectors, preamps, and pads to get around the fact that this is not a line level input and there is no way to monitor the levels actually going to tape. It'll be constant playback checks to see if the level is too hot overloading the tape or too low buried in hiss. Also, this isn't even a standard 3.5 millimeter jack. They are both 2.5 millimeter. I've already ordered the connectors. This next sentence is to replace an entire paragraph of signal chain explanation. <clears throat> it will be a challenge I will showcase in the follow-up video of the actual experiment. I'm going to play the outro bump music of this video limited to that 400 hertz to 4000 hertz frequency response. This will be my benchmark, allowing of course for tape hiss. Can I make my mix sound better than this bump music, as far as fidelity is concerned? Probably not. Most likely not. But it will be an absolute blast trying. 
Thank you so much for watching. You are worthy of love, both giving and receiving love. You are also worthy of your own self-respect, and I think we slowly begin to realize that through a healthy dose of geek therapy, like experimenting with dead formats to do things they were never intended to do. You can always catch me on the Geek Therapy Radio podcast. Just type in Geek Therapy Radio to your favorite podcast player and look for the red, black, or white color scheme or any combination thereof. If you like the podcast, share it with your friends. If you like this video, be sure to throw a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts on this experiment, let her rip in the comments below. Take care, everyone. <laughs>